Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. This is Restaurant Table Reservation Lab video series. And in this video, we are going to talk about the background servers in .NET Core 7. This is a very interesting feature and you can actually offload your work to the background task and it will do it for you and you don't need to worry about many things. And stay tuned until this end of this video, it will be worth watching and come let's get started. So let me give an example of uh, what and how this background job is working. So background job is nothing but a service that is going to run behind our application like continuously and then it will check for certain things and does certain work. So let's give an example. So here in this case when I start booking an application, somebody booked it right. Many users came in, they, they booked a table reservation and all those things done. My idea is to check the database behind the scene. And then if there is anything, uh, the upcoming reservation, which is less than 24 hours, I wanted to send an email to those users automatically. I will not call any function. I will not do anything, but all these magics happens automatically when the reservation is less than 24 hours. So this is just an example, but basically background service is used when there's a heavy load that operation happens during the endpoint call like API call but you don't want it to make the endpoint to take more time for example any microservices should be in milliseconds let's say there is a task which is taking uh, five to six seconds like IO operation or anything anything that takes more than a second right now you wanted to avoid that so you can hook up those things into background services and then the background services will take care of that for you and it will offload the work. So that is what this is and I'm going to simulate a simple example here. So what I'm going to do is I will first show you a demo. So for example, I am on a deployed version. I come here, I select a branch and let's say I'm a user who's uh, trying to book any of uh, these dates. Let's say for example, I'm going to book a table for this date right now when I book this so when I book this and submit basically an email will be triggered and that email will be so there are two emails automatically triggered you see this one is the reservation confirmation one is the reservation confirmation reminder so basically this reminder email was automatically sent from our application thinking it is less than 24 hours okay so this was done through the background task and just to show you the demo that these two can tr be triggered one is via api one is via the background service i showed it but let me take a look at the code and i'll explain you what so in order to proceed on this first thing that i have to do is i have to come to this code project and then i have to change a reservation table i added a column called as reminder sent so basically when the reservation is happening default the reminder set will be zero like it will be false Okay, so what we are going to do is we are going to set this as true when we send in a reminder. Now, in order for our background service to work, the simple thing that you need to do is you need to write first the, um, you have to use the existing code which is provided by the Microsoft and that's called the background service. That is implementing I hosted servers and I disposable servers. I mean, those interfaces it is, it is implementing. So this piece of code, you don't need to worry. All you need to know in this piece of code is it has something called execute async, start async, stop async, and these are the three main methods, okay? This is abstract class, okay? So we can actually overwrite this. So let's take a look at what we do. We have something called reminder service. It's basically a, it's basically a service, okay? Now what we're doing is we are saying we will implement the background service. So we inherit the background service, which means we are eventually inheriting the two interfaces which background services inheriting now we need to override and implement that so basically you remember execute async that one right so we have a constructor which we have a, a logger we have something called service factory service factory is going to help you to on fly to get the registered service we have we have many services right like email servers repository service the service that service all the service we can actually on fly we can request from the dependency injection now, here is the thing, the piece of code that you need to know before we go into the deep 
coding so this is the minimum piece of code right so basically execute async we are saying until it is stopped continuously run and execute whatever is inside this i have a try catch and then i have a two seconds wait this can be like every two seconds this code is going to be executed until that time it will sleep now we can increase this to one minute one hour whatever based on the need for our demo purpose we need this probably we can include uh, you know increase this now i will paste this code and i'll explain you what it is so let's go and expand this okay now we will create a using which means it's a scoped code anything within this using will be disposed that is what the using scope is now we are creating a service factory scope using the scope you can actually uh, you know invoke service provider dot get required service and you can actually invoke your db instance or even the any interface instance so we need in this case i email notification instance we need the db instance once we have these two all what i'm doing is go to reservation table take the reservation that is marked as booking but the booking date and the current date the difference should be less than 24 hours that is what it means the moment i add the next condition that it should be less than 24 hours but at least after booking we should not get that reminder email right so it should be at least more than one hour when i do this it will pick up those records and it will go through each record and gather some information and try to call the send booking email thing using the email notification service i'm i'm reusing this method and i'm just passing um, you know yes or no so based on uh, yes or no basically this body will be having an extra uh, in the subject line so that is what it is all about so once i got the response we will try to trigger the email notification if the email notification was sent successfully we pick up that record marked as sent reminder sent is true update the database and done with the changes so basically in the background servers we are calling the email notification servers we are touching the database we are updating an entity all those things are possible this is all is happening and we are able to send to uh, i mean we are able to send the email notification so this this video is all about understanding what is background servers how you can use background servers in dotnet core and we are using dotnet core 7 background servers is to offload certain work which will take more time to finish it it can be this kind of work or it could be any work that is part of your api processing so when you call an api if it has to do for example i'll give you a live example right so in the restaurant reservation and thing we hooked up this message this email sending part in this api itself probably this took let's assume let's it took two seconds I can hook up this in background service. So the similar code that we wrote, the moment it sees something is booked, it will automatically send the email. That's what all about the background service. Okay, so this is also part of our uh, video series. And I hope you enjoy this video. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, have your name commented, provide your comments in the comment section and give me a thumbs up, share this with your friends. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more tech tutorials. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified when we post new videos. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Happy coding!